Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my friend and co-host, Alan Peterson. Alan is the executive director of the Compassionate Friends. Alan, I'm so happy to have you as my co-host today. Well, what an honor to be here with you. I love doing uh, shows together, and uh, we've uh, certainly got a good one today. I think a good, good uh, information and a and an inter interesting topic. Yeah, uh, I think it's really important what we're talking about today, Alan, because we're going to talk about charities. And I know uh, when you have a loved one die, sometimes you're thinking about uh, what to do with maybe donations people want to give you or how you can honor your loved one. And I know a lot of you are, are thinking about how you can deal with a loved one and how you can honor them. And we're going to be talking about an organization called Charity Smith with some people that have been involved with us. And it's a very interesting uh, proposition. It is, you know, I, I, so many people when they have a loved one die, um, you know, they, they come to the point in their grief where they want to honor their life, they want it to have meaning, and, and so they look at different options, and certainly one option that many people choose is to start a foundation, uh, but a lot of times people don't realize there's a lot more yeah. to it. There's some legal aspects and how to market it and raise money, and I think Charity Smith is really a leader out there in, in helping people with that process and allowing them to work on their mission. So I think there's going to be some good information, but also some really good stories Absolutely. of loss and, we, and, and, and what, how having a foundation and how giving helps uh, in the grieving process. So right. I think we're going to cover both today. Yeah, and finding hope and, and finding uh, meaning. Absolutely. Well, why don't you introduce our guest today? Yes, let me do that. Tim Meadows is with us, and Tim Meadows is a board member of uh, Charity Smith, but he's also uh, does uh, has a foundation in honor of his son uh, Christopher. Uh, and then we also have Ashley Gallier, and she's the executive director of Charity Smith. And uh, her brother uh, Adam died three years ago, so a lot of their work is intertwined with Charity Smith. But they also have two. Uh, two very interesting stories, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to learn from them today. Absolutely. Well, Tim, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure Tim, to be here. glad you could be here. And uh, we also say that we're sorry for the reason you're here, because, uh, you know, it has directly related to your son's death. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Christopher? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, it was 341 Sundays ago. We got a phone call from the Sheriff's Department. Um, it was one of those beautiful days. started out wonderful. We had a gathering at our home with friends, dear friends. We had just said goodbye to them, and about 10 to 10 that night, we got a phone call from the Sheriff's Department. Christopher is dead. Oh. And it, it's the, you know, the shock that no parent ever wants to get, the call no parent ever wants to get. Um, Chris was a business school graduate. He had been out of college for a couple of years. <clears throat> he he uh, decided that he didn't really want to pursue a career in business. It wasn't where his heart was, and this kid had a, a huge heart. He was just such a caring person. He chose to spend his time in the two years since he graduated from college as an emergency medical technician, a career where he could get the thrill of riding on call on uh, with the ambulance, uh, but right. also helping people in their time of need. And unfortunately, he had... Uh, decided to volunteer uh, to provide medical coverage at the dunes at, at uh, Oceano uh, in Central California on a busy Memorial Day week in a very, very, very uh, dangerous place. A lot of uh, ATV action and rollovers and things of that nature. He was providing medical aid, riding a four-wheel drive ATV. And you have to understand, this kid was the most careful, risk-averse, child you can imagine never got any trouble went over a dune on his way to a medical call on his ATV flipped his ATV it landed on top of him and uh, killed him instantly um, wow. so that's so sorry that's you know one of the story. things I was talking to you a little bit about earlier is um, my son Scott was uh, our only uh, son and I know Christopher was mm -hmm. your son, only son you have two daughters yes and I know Alan's daughter Ashley, Ashley. Uh, was his only daughter my only daughter yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, I think one of the things that we like to bring out here is that these are really tragic things for all of us in many many ways in many different circumstances but some way we do something to turn them around and I, I wondered if you'd had any any turning points for you and then I want to talk to you about how you got on the board of Charity Smith and that may be okay. related to all this. Yeah, yeah. Well, the biggest turning point for me actually there were several but the one I'll, I'll relate to you here is 
Um, we did start a memorial fund in Chris's honor, and he, when he died, we found uh, applications of paramedic school in his car. So we knew mm -hmm. he wanted to go on to paramedic school, and we set up the scholarship fund uh, for that. The, the, the point at which I started to feel like I was, you know, in, in my new normal and starting to come back to my life um, was really related to raising money for the scholarship fund. Mm -hmm. And, and in going around raising funds and getting uh, sponsors for our scholarship, I got to tell Chris's story over and over right. again. Made me feel like I was connected to him. And I started to feel like I can do something to keep his memory alive. I can do something to keep him alive in my heart. And that's, that's when I started to feel now, better. Now, how long was that for you? I think it was probably at least two years mm -hmm. in, which may be, uh, may be short for some people. Um, it, it felt right to me, though, uh, mm -hmm. at the time. I think that's a good point, Alan, yeah. in a couple of years. I mean, people are like, uh, you know, would you get two weeks off from work, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, some people, uh, we see them, they'll start their foundation, you know, almost within weeks. But I think sometimes giving a little time to work on your grief uh, is a good thing. But so you, you start the, the, the foundation and talk a little bit about what you've gotten back and obviously you, you get to keep uh, Christopher's name out there but for you personally in your grief journey how, how has it benefited you? Well I think it's <clears throat> it goes without saying that it, it's pretty obvious that you get to remember your child their, their name is memorialized through the through the fund and giving scholarships to other people you're able to pay it forward uh, to other kids that wanted to pursue your child's needs. So those are all good things. Right. What I was surprised about is the positive energy I was personally getting from running this fund. Right. I was getting positive feedback back from the many wonderful people that I met that I never would have met if my son had, hadn't been killed, uh, co-workers and colleagues and but so forth. But now you also, in addition to the, to the foundation, you've also uh, have done something else where you're doing another uh, working for CARA, which people may not know what that is. Talk a little bit about that, because what I think is interesting is your background is in marketing, yet you're doing things today that, mm -hmm. that, are, that are quite outside of your comfort zone. Talk a little bit about the work that you do there and how that has benefited you as well. Well, that's a good point. I, uh, I describe myself as kind of the prototypical American male. When I came to grief, my wife asked me uh, if I was interested in going to a couple's uh, grief uh, uh, group and I said sure honey I'll be happy to come and support you. <laughs> I was going to say it's a <laughs> I never <laughs> expected <laughs> that I was going to get anything out of it right. and then actually I sat through the first few sessions I'm a very process oriented guy my career was in high technology I'm very orderly and organized and I wasn't getting anything out of the sessions I wasn't getting the how do you get fixed I wasn't getting all the tips and tricks mm -hmm. to dealing with grief but I realized there was a lot more to it and that it was about telling your story, yeah. having people available to listen. And so I decided I'd become a peer grief counselor. Mm -hmm. Never in my wildest dreams uh, would I have ever thought that I'd spend time doing that. Wow. And it's been so rewarding. That is also an uh, endeavor that pays you back in dividends. And how long did it take for you to get to that point? Uh, well, that was probably four years. Okay, and, and I like those, you know. Yeah, it was a, definitely a progress, stepwise progression uh, uh -huh. before I was ready to do that. But Gloria, yeah. we, we just see that, you know, all the time in the people that we interview and that we meet, people who find something that they can grab onto, mm -hmm. that connects them, keeps them connected to the love and, and it gives them something to do, and it's very healing. Right. And so that's uh, that's awesome that you've done that. I mean, it's... it's Matt, you it's, got on the board of Charity Smith. Tell us a little bit about that. How did you get on that board? Who founded it? Well, Brooks Rolene is an anesthesiologist in the Lake Tahoe area, and he founded this, this uh, Charity Smith organization many, many years ago to, to honor his father. And it's turned into really an umbrella organization that makes it easy for people like me to establish a, a memorial fund. It basically takes the heavy lifting out of doing the fund and frees up my time to be able to focus on fundraising and more importantly giving the money away to kids that need paramedic scholarships. Mm -hmm. um, 
But I, um, I had a hard time with when I wanted to initially start my fund because in order to really do it by the books, you need to become a nonprofit. You need to become a 501c3, which is the IRS vernacular for nonprofit tax right. exempt status. It requires legal fees. It, re it, it, re it requires an annual tax return to be filed. I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So when in doubt, what do we do? We turn to the Internet. When we can't right. find our answers, we turn to the Internet, and I search for for services like this that could help me out, and there it was, Charity Smith. So I liked it so much, not only did I start my fund there, but I petitioned to get on the board of that organization because I wanted to help, you know, get them better known in, in the world, so. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see, uh, I think we uh, want to see a picture of your son. Um, Christopher. He was such a, yeah, Christopher, he's such a dynamic uh, kid. And then, also, we're going to see a role, and there he is. What's he doing out there, hiking? Uh, that's, uh, he was a volunteer for the um, uh, search and rescue team in San Luis Obispo County, too. He wow. loved gadgets, and so he's got all his gear on that picture, his walkie-talkies and his GPSs and everything, and uh, he, he, uh, he had a lot of fun doing that. He was about to become the medical team lead for that uh, search and rescue group. Right. Well, we're going to see a roll-in now of another charity. You've got your charity with Charity Smith. And uh, what, how would they find your charity with Charity Smith? Uh, well, they can go to uh, the Christopher Meadows Scholarship Fund, I believe is the web address. Uh, and that links then to the Charity Smith site, which houses our website there. All right, fantastic. Right. And we're going to see another roll-in, Alan. Now is uh, Josiah's A. Sterling Memorial Fund. And we just took a little clip of their yeah. uh, of the work they're doing uh, in mem in his memory, and it's another Charity Smith organ uh, charity. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, it talks a little bit about sibling loss on there and and what people have done and a swim meet and that kind yeah, of thing. Very inspirational. And then after that, we are going to meet the executive director of Charity Smith. Yeah, talk to Ashley. Perfect. The annual Josiah A. Sterling Memorial Rugby Tournament, affectionately dubbed the Apple Pie Sevens, is an all-day sports and fundraising event in Philadelphia's Fairmount Park. Teams and spectators come from all over Greater Philadelphia to watch, to play, and snack on apple pies, the favorite treat of the young man who inspired this event. For many in attendance, the joys of this competition are bittersweet. It was established in the wake of a tragedy. Josiah Sterling was raised in North Philadelphia with his parents, immigrants from Haiti, and five siblings. Powerful, hardworking, and most often remembered for his remarkable personality. He was a friend to everyone he met. Totally open and giving, not a pretense about him. Just a wonderful kid, wonderful person. He embodied what we were supposed to be at the prep, men for and with others. He attended St. Joe's Preparatory School on an academic scholarship, and it was there he discovered rugby. Soon after he first stepped onto the pitch, it became apparent that he was no normal player. He was inspirational. It was just that kind of joy of rugby, and I want to get out there, I want to play, I want to be with my friends, I want to really make that hit, I really want to make that pass. And it was so contagious that you would change your game plan. So you were going to put him in in the second half, you're going to put him in in 15 minutes, and you're like, all right, just go in, and he changed the game. Josias continued on to Temple University, joining the rugby team as a freshman in 2008. He established himself quickly, playing in more games than any freshman in team history and becoming fast friends with his teammates. In July of 2009, Josias was throwing a rugby ball with a friend in knee-deep water off the beach in Ocean City, New Jersey. Without warning, a treacherous riptide swept him out to sea. Josias had never learned to swim. He was only 19 years old. Everyone knew Josiah was an amazing athlete. The biggest irony of it, um, someone who no one could take down on the field or the track or wherever he was or the court, um, didn't know how to swim. And so that's something so simple. In honor of Josiah's memory, his teammates and friends have launched an effort to make this life-saving skill available in Philadelphia. All of the money raised through the rugby tournament's advertising booklets, food sales, and apparel is donated directly to teaching water safety to children. Wow. Well, Alan, that's a powerful video, isn't it? And thinking yeah. about one of the things I love in there is that the sister talks. If Heidi were here, she'd be like, yes, yes we got a sibling yeah. talking and kids are doing stuff and people are being able to get involved. But it's inspirational how they took his love of rugby and, and his inability to swim, which took his life and kind of married the two together to help a lot of people. And 
you know, that's what we do. Yeah, that's, that's great what we for do. families. Absolutely. Well, Ashley, we want to welcome you on the show, the Executive Director of Charity Smith. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank me. You for Can you here. talk a little bit about the family we just saw, and, and you were in touch with them, right? And right. They have um, the interesting thing about the Josiah Say Sterling Memorial Fund is it's actually administered by his former teammates and uh -huh. some families within that. His family's involved in the annual fundraiser, but as far as the administrative duties, um, it's a group of friends. And what I like about that fund is it's, it's addressing, you know, um, a need in Philadelphia area. It's, there are a lot of kids that don't know how to swim. So in a nod to his life and his legacy, they do have the rugby tournament and use that money to fund the Josiah Say Sterling Aquatic Education Program. So it's, you know, it's bringing positive change by directly addressing his cause of death. Ah, great. So, well, I, I just wanted Ashley to tell us a little bit about your experience. You, we were talking to you earlier about how you got involved with Charity Smith and you started working for him and then lo and behold, as fate would have it. Yes. Right. I got involved with Charity Smith on a very part-time basis. Um, I was working a lot of part-time jobs in the Lake Tahoe area. And, um, stumbled upon the organization and three months after I began working for them my brother passed away mm -hmm. and the founder um, I'll never forget this phone call the founder and this called is just me. three years ago right yeah. it'll be three years in January um, in route back home to North Carolina the founder called and um, said he really needed to talk to me could I call him back so I call him back and he said this is something you really should do I know it's difficult right now it's, there's so many things going on but this will be something you'll be happy to have in place months and years down the road and I always hear his voice in my head saying that you know every time I revisit my brother's fund um, I'm just so glad that he encouraged me to do that because at that point I didn't think I could do that I thought I need to help my parents and he said this is helping your parents yeah. they'll be so happy you know later that is so powerful to hear that. And your brother died of uh, he passed um, viral meningitis. Wow, right. that's yeah. very. So you've been able to 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 live the experience, of really both sides of having the loss, also of setting up uh, the foundation in honor of your brother, and then also working with uh, many different uh, organizations. So tell us a, a little bit for this person out here who's watching tonight, and they're thinking, hey, I would like to do something to honor my loved one. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to do all of that work and all that accounting or what I do. Give us a brief overview of, of what Charity Smith does, how you can help these, these families. The way I like to describe it is um, we provide the administrative framework. And that framework is different for every fund. Some people host an annual fundraiser and we help them get through all the paperwork process to do that. And then they don't revisit the fund again until it's time to distribute the money. Some funds are ongoing, constantly fundraising. They partner with other groups and do events all year round. So it really is up to the fund administrators how involved they want to be. We just take the administrative burden off their shoulders. We provide donation receiving, monthly reporting, um, fundraising support. We do all the tax filings at the end of the year. Um, so we really have a, a great group of people that are involved with us that are specialists in different areas and they all come together to to make you know um, a job like Tim's a lot easier he's not burdened with the paperwork that, that's amazing you know what I really love about this is with the grief process Tim and I think you know this too because you've worked at Cara is that it's not a, a straight process I mean there be there, there might be years or months when you want to be involved and maybe want to have a fundraiser and maybe next year you don't want to have a fundraiser again or you don't want to do a golf tournament or Absolutely. you you know you you just don't want to do it anymore and and you can really uh, count on this to be with you in your grief process right. I would think and I've experienced that you know people who jump in head first and then they back off and I always tell those people I say we're we're here when you're ready our mm -hmm. team is going to be here whether it's six months or two years from now um, you know, we hold the money securely. Each memorial fund has its own savings account. Um, our accounting is fully open and transparent. So I like to give people their freedom, you know, to, to come to us when they're ready. But it's something I definitely encourage people to get all the setup complete, and then you can come back mm -hmm. when you're ready. That's great. Tim, what was your experience with Charity Smith? Well, it was just wonderful. I mean, as I said, I was put off by, you know, the thought of having to do tax reporting and thank you notes. I mean, we do our own thank you notes too, but Charity Smith does the tax, uh, the tax version of the charity note for us. And the support's always there. I mean, our website was set up within a week. Wow. Um, wow. 
and which also has the capability within it to ha take donations through the web page. So that was really now, is there a, a fee for this? process. Yes, there is a fee. It's a it's a fee that's basically kicked down to us from our merchant processor. But I recently um, partnered us with a merchant processor that deals only with nonprofits. It took me a few years to find them, <laughs> but once I did, they've been really great to work with, and their fees are a lot lower than PayPal and some other. Mm -hmm. organizations that are for-profit businesses. So so what would be my general thing to set up a website if I wanted to and do Well, we work? have a web developer that works on contract and he sets up the websites. Um, for example, when new people come to me um, after I've got the story and all the paperwork complete and the contract signed, I send them over to um, our web developer, James, and he works with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis to decide what photos work best with the website, what they want the layout to look like, um, and that's when you know, I sort of hand them off to him, and and they people are always so happy. And mm -hmm. and so, what about Tim? You volunteered, and I'm kind of listening to this. And are there volunteer opportunities for people too? Uh, volunteering with Charity Smith. Uh -huh. Well, that's a good question. Um, I would say not so much with Charity Smith. Um, most people that are involved with Charity Smith are involved because they their loved one is being memorialized by one of our funds. Mm -hmm. So people get involved on an individual level. You know, if someone that Tim knew wanted to help out with Chris's memorial. Okay. Um, right. Every once in a while I get uh, someone inquiring, how can I get involved in, you know, so-and-so's fund? And I would link them then with the fund administrator. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's ask you, Ashley, the same question that we posed to Tim earlier. In your own personal grief journey, how, um, what's been the impact on your own personal grief journey, working with Charity Smith and having the foundation for your brother? What, what there's, there's so many ways it's positively impacted my grief journey. One of the main ones that struck me as I was listening to you guys talk earlier was, um, you know, years go by, months go by, I keep meeting people. My brother does not, you know. The foundation gives me an opportunity to keep telling people about him and his life, people that I encounter after his passing. And I feel like it's, it's a more, you know, it's an easier way to talk about him. Um, it's, we're bringing something positive out of a loss. Mm -hmm. um, the darkest time in our lives continues to be dark, but there, there are many bright lights. And when you're involved with anything to do with grief support and helping other people, those lights are more frequent and, and brighter. Yeah, we, you know, uh, Gloria and I both, <laughs> we, we meet thousands of grieving people, and I think the one commonality to grief that we find is that early on everybody wants to talk about it or, you know, mm -hmm. but as the time and as the years go by, it gets quieter and quieter, and we always say that if their name is going to continue to be heard and, and uh, their life continue to make a difference, it's now up to us to do that, and I think uh, this organization and starting a foundation is just a wonderful way to, yeah. to just have their name heard and said. I also, also wanted to add, um, I've always encountered people, you know, that when I tell them what I do for work, they say, isn't that so sad? Don't you, <laughs> isn't it so sad to talk to people who've lost a loved one every day? And I say, no, it's, it's really beautiful because these people are reaching out to us. We don't really do much advertising. They find us the same way Tim found us. They what they want to do in their darkest time is help other people and in most cases they want to help people they've never even met so that's what keeps me going day after day and I want to reach more and more people because I see the very best in people often it's said in grief the best and the worst comes out I only see the best I only see people that want to help other people and so it you know it really gives me a lot of fuel to to help them and you I wanted, to, I wanted to get into compassionate friends for a minute yes. because uh, before we the show ends, I want her to talk about the Sounds of Sibling website because That's you're a right. brave sibling, and I know you said uh, that you go to the Compassionate Friends Brave right. Sibling website. Um, Tim and I presented this past summer in Dallas at the Compassionate Friends National Conference, and I had no idea there was a sibling contingent within that. I just was, you know, in the mindset that we're going to present to. I was going to talk to a room full of bereaved parents, which was really intimidating for me. I mean, I deal with my own, but <laughs> 30 of them in a room was, was a little intimidating. But then I quickly you know, met these other siblings and other parents and heard their stories. I felt right at home. And um, since then, yeah, there is a, the Sounds of the Siblings. It's a Facebook group. Yeah. And just, you know, sometimes at night I'll read those posts. And it's so familiar feeling to, you know, to interact with those people. And um, it's not sad at all. It's, it's a really amazing group.
the sibling experience is different than the parent experience. It's different than, you know, all grief is different. But I think what, what is awesome about that is that it was created so that siblings have their protected space. Uh, because a lot of parents want to get in there. We want to hear what you're thinking. Uh, <laughs> so Heidi, Heidi we like to sneak in that door yeah. and know what's in your mind, but yeah. we don't get that. Uh, Heidi it's always you. does a sibling thing at Compassionate Friends National Conferences, which will be, by the way, in uh, July in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, yes. at a fabulous resort, the Fairmont. Fairmont. So you're going to want to go there. It's fantastic. July 12th, 14th. You guys are going to be there. You bet. Oh, uh, we're happy to have you come back. And but present Heidi will do a sibling thing, and uh, parents are just trying to beg. <laughs> down the door to get in and she has to they get do. Out. They, they, they want but, in there. Uh, yeah, so great. Well, it's been so great having you guys on the show, and, and thanks, thanks for all the work you're doing and, yes. and talking about Charity Smith. I just, it's such a neat organization, and please give our love to the founder and uh, tell him I have never met him. What is his name again? Brooks. Brooks. And Charity like Smith. That, what's the way CharitySmith.org. Um, yeah. You can always email me, Ashley, at CharitySmith.org. I'm always available to answer questions. And um, right. I also wanted to add, you know, we, we have a lot of memorial funds that we create for people um, long after a passing. It's never too late. If you lost someone 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and you've always had that thought in your mind that you wanted to do something, you still can. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, Alan, it's been a great show. Been a good and, show. And boy, I've got that Charity Smith in the back of my mind. You never yeah. know who you're going to tell about it or whether you're going to use it yourself. I'm glad we can share them today with our audience. So. Absolutely. Great. Well, thanks for watching our show today. And we want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours till you find your own. And we hope that you will think about starting a foundation for Charity Smith. I started one, the Open to Hope Foundation. But I will tell you, it was a lot of work, Alan. Yeah. And, uh, and it's a lot of work yearly because we have to do tax reports and all that Absolutely. kind of stuff. So, so it's important uh, to try to think about, you know, what you're doing and when you're doing it and to take care of yourself, right? Absolutely. Do you have any parting words for well, these Well, you folks? know, I just want to thank you for uh, letting me co-host with you today and all the wonderful work you do at Open to Hope. We mentioned Compassionate Friends today, but Open to Hope is a wonderful place where people can get great grief resources. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that they... Uh, they go and read the great articles and all the good stuff. We're going to have two more writers over here writing. Yeah, I Hope. hope so. All right. Well, all right. good to have you on. And thanks again for watching the Open to Hope show. And God bless. <laughs>